regular Township Council meeting of July 21, 2020. Introduction, posting of notice. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the requirements of the open public meeting law by filing notice in the office of the Township Clerk and by posting the meeting notice on the bulletin board at the Municipal Building on December 18, 2019, where it has remained posted since that date. A legal notice appeared in the Daily Record in the Newark Star Ledger on December 23, 2019, and was forwarded by fax to local newspapers and local radio stations on December 18, 2019. Note, council meetings are videotaped and aired on Public Access Channel 21 at 7 p.m. Sundays and Wednesdays and are also available for viewing at www.parsippany.net. Uh, if I may ask everyone to please stand for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, this is now going to roll call. <clears throat> Mr. Cariffi? Here. Ms. Grignani? Ms. Grignani? Here. Ms. McCarthy? Here. Ms. Peterson? Here. Mr. DePiro? Here. Also in attendance are Mayor Michael Soriano, Business Administrator Keith Kazmark, uh, Township Attorney Jim Lott, CFO Ann Cucci and Township Clerk Colette Madden. Uh, Council President, we have a quorum. May I begin? Please. Okay, at this point, the upcoming meetings August 4th, 2020 at 7 p.m. is the agenda meeting. August 18th, 2020 at 7 p.m. is the regular meeting. And we're going to go into the approval of minutes. We have the minutes for the agenda meeting of June 9th, 2020, and the minutes of the regular meeting June 16th, 2020. Can I please have a motion to approve the minutes? Make a motion. Second. Motion made by Mr. Cariffi, seconded by Ms. Grignani. Roll call, Mr. Cariffi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? I'm muted, Emily. Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Okay, motion passes. I'm uh, moving along to uh, presentations and reports. Uh, Mayor, thing is yours. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Um, just uh, very briefly, I just want to review that um, the total number of COVID-19 cases in Parsippany as of the beginning of this week was 787. This marks an increase of five cases in the past week, only five cases. And we've increased at about 21 cases in the past four weeks, we've stayed under double digits. There have been no new additional deaths of COVID-19 in the past few weeks in Parsippany. And uh, you can always keep up to date with those numbers on the Morris County Coronavirus Tracker page. Now, right now, Parsippany, New Jersey, continue to be spared from the worst of this pandemic. That's, uh, that's in our country right now. And um, this credit lies mostly with the residents for practicing social distancing, listening to the quarantine uh, protocols and wearing masks when outside and in public. We need people to continue doing that so we can maintain this progress. There has been a bit of an uptick in the state of New Jersey. I'm hoping that's not a trend, but uh, I'm hoping that we continue to do everything that we're doing here in Parsippany. And I wanna thank everyone for their continuing to put their own health, their family's health and the health of the community and the health of people they don't even know first by maintaining these protocols. Um, that's all I have. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Council President. Thank you very much, Clerk. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> At this time, uh, would anyone from the Township Council have anything to report? I'd just like to respond to the Mayor's report that that is exceedingly good news, that Parsippany is doing so well, and no, no new deaths. Um, that is really good news. We just have to encourage everyone to keep up the uh, safeguard. Okay, anyone else from any member, any other member from the Township Council? Okay, uh, seeing no one, uh, Township Attorney? I have no report. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the Business Administrator, Mr. Keith Kazmark. Uh, thank you, Mr. Madden. Uh, we are planning to reopen uh, municipal buildings and facilities this coming Monday, July 27th. We have a memorandum uh, which outlines all of the safety protocols, procedures, um, what the uh, public will have to follow in order to access the buildings. 
Uh, we're trying to do this in line with the August 1st tax collection date. Uh, so we are going to uh, administer that memo to all staff tomorrow, and we will um, monitor it next week uh, as we head for that August 1st tax payment deadline. And if we need support from the police department for the first few days, just to make sure people are abiding by social distancing and being able to access entrance points and exit points correctly, uh, we'll work with Chief Miller to achieve that. Uh, secondly, uh, I just want to thank the, uh, the town council and also Mayor Soriano for their confidence in me over the past two years. Uh, as some may have read in the newspaper, uh, I will be pursuing an opportunity in my hometown come September 1st. Uh, not necessarily looking to change jobs, but when I was approached to take on this new opportunity, it was hard to turn down. So I just want to thank, uh, again, the mayor, the council, uh, the residents of Parsippany, and all the staff at Town Hall and throughout the township uh, for their help, support, uh, in trying to achieve a good amount of progress over the last two years. So thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Madden. Just a comment, if I may. When uh, Keith came to the town, I... I told him that you would have to earn my trust and respect. You remember that, Keith? Um, you've done that, and uh, I'm, I'm sorry to see you go. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that, and uh, it means a lot to me that over the last two years I've been able to uh, to earn that from you. So thank you. Okay, I have no report. Uh, anyone from the Township Officers Committees? Nothing at this time. Okay. So moving right along, we're going on to bids taken. Uh, July 15th, 2020, Veterans Park culvert replacement to be taken. July 22nd, 2020, well drilling and installation services replacement. Production well 21-R. July 23rd, 2020, reconstruction of various streets in Mount Tabor, phase five. July 24th, lease on public property, quotations, proposals, qualifications, none. Um, <clears throat> guess that, um, at this point in time, I would like to uh, open up, uh, I would like a motion to open up the public hearing. Make a motion. Need a second? Second, Peterson. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Cariffi, seconded by Ms. Peterson, the roll call. Mr. Cariffi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Okay, uh, at this time, I'm going to open up the floor to the public. Uh, if you have anything to say, there's a raised hand in the uh, bottom uh, corner. You can raise your hand. Once we see you, we will unmute you. You'll have five minutes to speak. And uh, thereafter, we will uh, let you know. I'll give you a 30 second warning once the time is almost up. Okay, I have uh, Ken Dolsky with his hand up. We will go ahead and unmute Ken. Ken, uh, Ken, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, Ken, welcome. Um, the floor is yours. Your five minutes begin now. Great, thank you very much. Uh, members of the Persephone Town Council and Administration, uh, tonight I am asking you to ban the use of a cancer-causing substance called glyphosate in all well health protection and groundwater recharge areas and within 150 feet of all water bodies in Parsippany. As some of you may know, glyphosate is the prime ingredient in the herbicide Roundup, which is used by homeowners, commercial property users, and the Knoll Golf Club to control weeds. I sent you all detailed information on the effects of glyphosate and other ingredients to Roundup formulations that are extremely toxic by themselves and dramatically amplify the toxicity of the main ingredient of a herbicide. I will not repeat all the information, but I hope that you read it and recognize the full threat posed by this substance to our drinking water. Scientific studies show that there is a strong correlation between glyphosate and glyphosate formulations and serious health and environmental hazards, including disruption of hormonal systems and beneficial gut bacteria, damage to DNA, development and reproductive toxicity, birth defects, cancer, and neurotoxicity. A report in 2019 showed that a very low concentration of glyphosate can trigger breast cancer when combined with another risk factor. In March 2015, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, part of the World Health Organization, 
determined that glyphosate is probably carcinogenic to humans and therefore classified the herbicide as a carcinogen. Children are particularly vulnerable to the effects of herbicides and pesticides, including glyphosate. Glyphosate can have high activity and movement in the soil and can bond with water-soluble substances. Glyphosate's toxicity is compounded by its persistence in the environment. Many studies show that glyphosate remains chemically unchanged in the environment for long periods of time. Glyphosate is being detected in surface waters and groundwater wherever it is used. While it is not reported as a line item on our township water quality report, it is either there now or will be based on similar experiences around the world. Persephone has no ordinance that addresses the use of herbicides. Persephone has an ordinance for hazardous materials, chapter 199, but it only covers reimbursement to the town for cleanup efforts. Persephone's wellhead protection ordinance does not specify, specifically cite herbicides as hazardous materials. But even more importantly, it only addresses accidental spills, not deliberate deposition of hazardous materials. The only protection against water pollution from glyphosate in Persephone today is the Flood Hazard Area Control Act, which prohibits application of herbicides within a riparian zone. The current riparian zone for C2 streams like the Rockaway River is only 150 feet, but all water bodies will automatically be protected to the 300 foot buffer once Parsippany is in conformance with the Highlands Act. Therefore, we are asking that the Flood Hazard Area Control Act be implemented immediately, if not already in effect, to prevent the use of glyphosate within 150 feet of the portions of the Rockaway River adjacent to the golf club as well as any other water body in the township, and to extend this to 300 feet when the referral ordinance is passed, placing Parsippany in conformance with the Highlands Act. In addition, we ask the town to upgrade its wellhead protection ordinance to include glyphosate as a hazardous material and not allow it to be deliberately spread in any wellhead tiers or water recharge zones. So I plan to follow up on this with you um, as time goes on, and it'd be great if somebody on the council uh, or in the administration could be a point of contact for me on this issue. Is there a particular member of the council or administration with whom I should follow up on this issue? You Thanks. should follow up with me. Mayor, is that you? Yes. Very good, thank you. Can I um, ask that we put together a report from any department that's using Roundup or any uh, generic version of the chemical in question so that we can get a sense of how widespread is the use by weight or acreage, whatever it is? I do know that it's being researched um, as having impact on the honeybee populations because it disrupts their reproductive systems potentially and their gut flora potentially. There's a lot of research being done right now, but we have honeybee hives at the knoll. So it seems like we should at least be aware of how much of this is in use so that we know how much of it we need to control. How big is the issue? Thank you. Um, if I could just... If I can comment, I, I mean, we, we need to stop using it, period. It's not a matter of, of quantity. I mean, if you said it was a few drops a year or something like that, that's one thing. But basically, we really need to not allow it to get into the water system. I'm sure it's already working its way through the soil. 20 seconds, Ken. But we need to, you know, not make it worse, and, uh, and we need to basically stop using it, period. Thank okay. You. Ken, thank okay. you for your time. Um, if we can please mute Ken, does anyone else want to respond to uh, Mr. Go Mr. Dolsky's um, comments? Yeah, this is uh, Anis McCarthy. I, I wanted to, uh, I know that Kemper was going to discuss the river friendly certified golf courses. Um, I, I think we should still pursue that. I don't know if, uh, if we're doing it now, but I think it's something that we should look into going forward. And that would help us uh, out of this as well. Okay, thank you, Ms. McCarthy. Um, at this point, we have uh, Mr. Bob Venezia up. His hand is up. Can we please go ahead and uh, unmute Mr. Bob Venezia? Bob, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, Bob, how are you? Good? 
You have five minutes, Bob. Go ahead. You can start. Can we unmute Bob? Bob, unmute. We're trying. Okay, are you there, Bob? Okay, Bob, I think you keep muting. Okay, there you go. Bob, can you hear us? Okay, um, I would like to comment on the water and sewer rate increases that were proposed at the July 9th special council meeting. At that meeting, a 39% increase was proposed for 2020 and then annual increases of five to 8% for each of the following four years. I think that we all agree that some kind of utility rate increase is necessary because of the loss in water and sewer revenues caused by the COVID-19 shutdown. However, the proposals that I heard at the meeting went well beyond what is needed to restore lost COVID-19 revenue. And while COVID-19 impact is legitimate, some of the other excuses that I heard for the proposed increases have no credibility whatsoever. And I want to start with the uh, attempt at justifying an increase because rates have not been risen in, have not risen in 14 years. There were no increases during these years because there was no need for them. During those years, the increased demand for water and sewer services alone generated an average annual increase of three and a half percent. And I don't know if you got my, uh, I, I passed out a um, handout and- um, you know, Everybody received the handout, Bob. What's that? Everybody received the handout. Okay. Well, it's on the, you know, you can see the three and a half percent increase uh, on, on the handout. And that was more than enough to keep pace with utility expenses with enough left over to build a massive utility surplus. Once COVID-19 has been eliminated, there's no reason why utility revenues won't, won't again continue to increase by 3.5% annually. So without any changes in rates, the utility budgets have been increasing by 3.5% per year, which, by the way, is higher than the 2% cap that the general budget is allowed to increase. There's absolutely no justification for increasing rates by an additional 5 to 8% annually when you're already getting a 3.5 usage increase. Now, the uh, logic for the next excuse to raise utility rates goes something like this. Precipitate utility rates need to be raised in order to keep them in line with other municipalities in Mars County. Well, so much for being efficient. When you think about it, Parsippany should have the lowest utility rates in the county because of our unique situation. We have the advantage of economies of scale because we're the largest township in the county. We operate our own water and sewer departments, whereas many other municipalities are dependent on purchased water and sewer services. And most significantly, we supply sewer services to four other municipalities using the excess capacity we have in our system. What other towns, if any, have a good portion of their utility bills subsidized by income from other towns? If, Pars if Parsippany's utility rates are not low compared to other towns in the county, shame on us. And now we come to the elephant in the room, the 39% rate increase intended to make up for lost revenues due to COVID-19. And I think I'm going to surprise you here. Any rate increase should correspond to the amount of revenue lost you expect to suffer. And I will support a rate increase of whatever percent is needed to make up for this year's COVID-19 loss, whether it's 39% or 19% or something else. The problem is you're proposing a permanent increase to fix a temporary revenue shortfall. You have uh, one minute, Bob. With a rate increase of 39%, the lost COVID-19 revenues would be recovered in the next 12 months. But after that, the town would realize a second revenue in increase of another 39% when the utility usage returns back to pre-COVID-19 levels. Regardless of what percent the rate is increased, it must be in the form of a temporary surcharge which expires after one year. 
A temporary revenue loss requires a temporary rate adjustment, not a permanent one. In summary, 20 seconds, I, I ask that you table your current proposal and replace it with one that contains a temporary 2020 rate increase and expenses that do not exceed three and a half percent. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments, Bob. If we can go ahead and do Bob at this point. Through you, Council President, I'd like to respond to those public comments. First, let me, let me start off by saying to Ms. Venezia, uh, there was not a proposal made with regard to rate increases by the Council or by the administration. There was a discussion relative to a report that was prepared by Wilcox and Company where that one of their employees who happens to be a utility rate expert was asked to review our rate structure in Parsippany Troy Hills in order to determine how our rates would need to be adjusted in order to maintain a surplus um, and operating expenses moving forward. Uh, with regard to the quote unquote excuse pertaining to the COVID-19 public health crisis, at no time did, was it mentioned that I recall that these rate increases had anything to do with COVID-19. This was an issue that existed long before the pandemic um, and will continue to be a challenge unless the council and the mayor work together to make a determination as to how they will adjust rate structures moving forward. Now, the council uh, is in a productive conversation with the administration as to how best to adjust the rates in light of the fact that you are 100% correct. They have not been adjusted in 14 years. Uh, costs continue to grow with regard to capital improvements, with regard to labor agreements, which cover the employees at both the sewer department and the water department and our everyday operating expenses. Now, with regard to the spreadsheet that you sent over uh, to Mr. Madden, Mr. Venezia, uh, I've asked our chief financial officer to review that spreadsheet. Uh, she has done so, and I would ask Ann to speak to that uh, because unfortunately the spreadsheet that was submitted for review uh, was not accurate in many, in many ways. So Ann, I'll turn it over to you to finish our response. Thank you, Keith. Um, we, Bob, when we looked at that spreadsheet, um, first the revenue side, I just look at 2020. When you look at your revenues, it also included the operating surplus. And you can't do that. You need to pull the surplus out of there. So if you notice that every year, the increase in surplus needed to balance the budget continues to go up. Okay, so that needs to be pulled out. And when you do that, you start to see the fact that the revenues have not changed much in the last 20 years, whatever you have here. The other thing that's missing is in your appropriations, you're missing the all the debt and statutory expenses, which is a big part of what's going on in the in the water utility and the sewer utility, is the fact that we need to spend money on the capital improvements. For many years, the capital was not expended, spent on the water, on the water utility, such as what we're doing now to have to deal with the, uh, the uh, COVID requirements. So for example, in 2020, we're looking at a $9.58 million uh, capital expenditure, okay? Just to keep going, to maintain our wells and the increasing demand that's going to happen. The prior year was almost 8 million, but before that was only 3 million or 1 million. So it's very complex what's going on for the water utility. So if you go and pull out the surplus that's been used, your numbers are very different, okay? I can redo that for you if you want uh, and go over that. And in an effort to uh, provide Mr. Venezia with accurate numbers, um, if you could modify that spreadsheet to reflect debt service payments for debt already incurred for past capital impo improvement projects, plus current debt service that the council has authorized, let's say in the last two or three years for projects that are coming down the pike, including 
the repainting and refurbishing of both the interior and exterior of at least two water towers, mm -hmm. uh, plus some of the improvements that we have to make relative to the affordable housing litigation and the ability to provide capacity to any new developments that come before the planning and zoning board. I think that will give uh, Mr. Venezia, in addition to anyone who's listening right now, a very different perspective on where we are with regard to operating uh, capital and salary and wage expenses at both sewer and water. Thank okay. you. Okay, I'm happy to do that. Okay, now at uh, this time, moving right along, uh, I see uh, Jean Embler who has her hand up. So let's go ahead and unmute um, Jean. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think that's better. I think you can hear me better that way, I hope. Yes, um, we five minutes. I have a comment and I have a question. My comment first is in reference to the article from the daily record from the last meeting in reference to Mr. Madden. The statement that refers to a woman being beaten as a domestic squabble is not only disgusting, but harkens to a day when domestic violence was not mentioned outside the home. That is my statement. And I would like to pose a question to Councilman DiPirio, um, why he did nothing to de-escalate the mob mentality at the Columbus rally. Any other uh, questions, Ms. Embler? No, that is it, thank you. Thank you. Uh, if we can go ahead and mute Ms. Embler, please. Do we have a response from any of the council members? Okay, uh, at this point, we're moving right along. Glad. You know, I, if I may, uh, I just would like to make a statement about, uh, you know, uh, those who participated in the July council meeting and then again tonight uh, about this personal matter involving the town clerk. Um, I, you know, I think it's important to understand that the council is being asked to take action based on information that was sourced from media, media articles that's veracity really hasn't been verified. And, and its source really not determined. And I'm confident that residents have a higher expectation that the individuals they elect to office have a better judgment in making decisions that impact their lives. You know, and, and I think what should be very concerning to all residents is that confidential information, true or not, somehow makes its way to the media and the public and how that happens. I mean, there are laws regarding confidentiality on domestic issues to protect all the parties involved. And I think most importantly, to protect the victims. So let me say again, that it's most important to protect the victims. So, you know, what happened here? You know, what this media article and what occurred here at this council meeting and the past council meeting, does it create doubt concerning trust in the individuals and institutions in Parsippany that are responsible to protect confidentiality? And then with, with the lack of trust and uncertainty, does it stop victims from coming forward in the future? You know, will it raise concerns that unfounded judgments will negatively impact them and their families? You know, and I ask you to consider how it feels to be victimized again months later by well-intended uh, I guess, rights fighters regarding the, the descriptions of violence to make their case and demand action that negatively impacts both, both the victim and the family and the family's security through lost employment or other future opportunities. So I recommend that these individuals who participate in this effort develop a clearer understanding of the impact and the repercussions and consequences of their actions. And also they develop a broader knowledge of domestic issues and put their apparent passion into efforts to support domestic violence organizations. And I know they would be grateful. That's all I have to say. Uh, thank you, Ms. McCarthy. Uh, any other council member? Okay, seeing none, at this point, we would like to go next to um, Mr. Uh, Kevin Brancato. Can we go ahead and unmute Mr. Brancato? Go, uh, Kevin, you there? Yes, I am, can you hear me? Yes, Kevin, go ahead. The floor is yours. You have uh, five minutes. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to speak to the River Friendly Coalition. Uh, we have been pursuing uh, that designation since March. 
the pandemic held it up a little bit, but we are a good portion at the knoll of the way there to meeting the river friendly uh, designation. Uh, we in fact have a conference call with them tomorrow uh, to restart and review. So uh, I just want to let you know that, that uh, we, we are pursuing the river friendly. That's all I have. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Great. Any council member would like to comment on uh, Kevin's comments? Thank you, Kevin. We appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Um, next, we have uh, the hand up of Mr. Nick Homiak. Can we go ahead and unmute uh, Nick, please? Okay, Nick, you there? Nick, can you hear us? Nick, you're muting yourself. Okay, Nick, you there? Nick. Okay, I think you're muting yourself. Nick, can you hear us? Nick? Okay, Nick, now you're unmuted. Okay, you're muted again. Unmute. Okay, Nick, can you hear us? You're unmuted, so uh, maybe you're using a different microphone on your computer. Okay. Um, I'll give you a couple minutes. Uh, Nick, so what I think, if you can hear me, is I think on your program you may have picked the wrong microphone. So we'll give you a minute to reselect the microphone, and we'll come right back to you, Nick. You, you can hit the uh, three dots. There's three dots. There should be three dots on your screen, and it's going to give you more options. It's going to say speaker, mic, or camera. Select mic. And then it should give you the option of microphone. You may have picked the wrong op option, if you can hear me, Nick. Okay, Nick, we'll give you a minute. We'll come back to you, okay? So at this point, let's mute Nick for a minute just so we can give the other members uh, an opportunity to speak. Okay, so now we have um, a Lily, uh, Lily, see here, Lily uh, Benavides. Let's unmute her. Lily, are you there? Lily, can you hear us? Yes, hi. Hey, how are you, Lily? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, absolutely, I think it was my mistake. No, I don't have nothing to say today. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. No problem, Lily. You have a nice night, and thank you. Thank you. All right, let's uh, un uh, unmute her. Let's mute her. Thank you, Lily. Um, all right, so let's, uh, Nick, we're going to come back to you again, Nick. Let's go ahead and unmute Nick. Nick, you're unmuted now. We'll give you a minute just to try to figure it out. Okay, Nick. You there? Hello. Hey, Nick, you there? No, this is Mayor Soriano. Hey, Mayor, how are you? I have an email that Nick sent me on what he wanted to read tonight. And he asked, well, he sent it to a couple of us. He asked, if it could be read into the record, if he couldn't sign on, I, I if you want, I will, I will be, I'll be fine reading it on behalf of Nick. Oh, that'd be great, Mayor. We appreciate okay, fine. That. Thank you so much. Let me do this. All right. Protecting our groundwater Parsippany sole source aquifer in water deficit. Ordinance to ban the use of herbicides, gas phosphate Roundup. Additional reasons and facts to support ban on on glyphosate. 
nature of the beast, the petrochemical industry itself, suggesting, suggests reminding everyone of what occurred in the Bhopal, India in December of 1984, a herbicide, MIC, methyl isonate. I feel like I'm reading a mayonnaise jar right now with the, uh, uh, with the words, it's hard, uh, which does not exist in nature, was released into the environment and within minutes had 8,000 people died on the spot. Many afterwards, over 500,000 injured people were still dying 15 plus years later. We see clearly the corporate quest for profit placed completely above all the values and a denial of responsibility. The story of how it came that a MIC producing facility was placed in a populated area and was not maintained properly reveals the nature of the beast. Glass phosphate roundup is part of this legacy. Two, much of Parsippany's aquifer is susceptible to contamination being part of the buried Valley aquifer is highly vulnerable to, to soil permeable and shallow depth to groundwater. Almost the entire groundwater basin can be a recharge area to some of the aquifer system. The area is already suburban and overdeveloped, therefore suffering impacts from road, salts, storm water runoff, which in their cumulative effects degrades the aquifer's water quality. Parsippany has been cited for not protecting its groundwater recharge areas in the past in a 2010 Highlands Analysis Report. The greatest example of this being water view development, for example, besides steep slopes and four forested were 98.7% HSG A soils. Losing this feature to the aquifer recharge had to have injured the recharge phenomenon deep well to excessively drained sand or gravel having high rate of transmission greater than 0.3 inches an hour. Parsippany has an ongoing water deficit within its aquifer itself due to inefficient recharge consumption and depletion. This requires us to have two other water sources diversions, JCM and MCM. Relying on these sources incur future cost increases and are now the subject of a pH level controversy. Water is a public trust and we must do all possible to safeguard its health, protection of groundwater. Resources that directly provide water to potable water supply wells is vital to the public health, safety, and welfare of the community. It is also of primary importance to ensure continued availability of clean drinking water to all that rely upon it through regulation and land use, physical facilities, and other activities within wellhead protection areas. The potential for groundwater contaminants can be reduced by preventing the introduction and migration of pollutants into groundwater sources that supply water supply wells. Lastly, the word of wording, wellhead, WHPA, in conjunction with groundwater recharge area. Please be encouraged to enact municipal ordinance to ban herbicides such as Roundup, as expressed in Colin Dulski's petition. Clearly, Nick Omiak. Nick, thank you very much for submitting this. Um, I am going to be meeting with uh, Nick, Nick uh, with um, Ken Dulski, and I appreciate your diligence on this. There's a lot of this that I do not understand. Some of it I do, and and uh, one of the reasons why Parsippany is now in the process of conforming with the Highlands Council is because we care about our water and water quality here in Parsippany. So thank you very much. Uh, Mayor, thank you for reading that into the record. I'm exhausted. <laughs> Mayor, uh, what if I may? Uh, I yes, please. Let everyone know for the council's edification, also the public's edification. Um, as attendees tonight, we do have um, our licensed water operator, uh, John Oreca, uh, who is available if the public has any questions about the recent notice, in addition uh, to David from our consulting firm. Uh, both are on the meeting tonight in case there are any questions that need to be answered. Okay, so then let's um, see if there are any questions here. Okay, if anyone has uh, spoken before, you only get your five minutes, so we will not allow another uh, opportunity. Um, don't see any questions at this particular point in time. Okay. Any other member of the public who would like to uh, speak? Going once, going twice. Okay, at this time I'd like to entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Okay. McCarthy. Okay, motion made by Mr. McCarthy. I need a second. Second. Who's that? Okay, I'm a, a second by Mr. Carithi. Uh, so we have a motion made by Mr. McCarthy, second by Mr. Carithi. Roll call, Mr. Carithi. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Ms. McCarthy. Ms. McCarthy. No. Ms. Peterson. Yes. yes. Mr. Tapiro. Yes. 
Okay, the floor is closed. We are moving right along to ordinances. At this time, we are going to uh, the introduction. Ordinance number uh, 2020, colon 25. Revising the table of organization of the police department with respect to the number of authorized lieutenant and sergeant positions. Be it resolved that the above ordinance be introduced by the title and passed on first reading at a meeting of the Township Council of the Township of Sipity, Troy Hills, held on July 21, 2020, and that said ordinance be further considered for the second reading and final passage at a meeting to be held on August 18, 2020, at 7 p.m. Prevailing time or similarly after the matter may be reached at the municipal building in the said township at which all persons interested shall be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance. Be further resolved that the clerk be authorized and directed to advertise said ordinance with the notice of reduction thereof being published in the official newspaper according to law. May I please have a motion to approve the above resolution? Make a motion. Can I please have a second? Um, can I just ask before we make Ms. this change? Uh, Ms. Peterson, before we do, if I can get a second, then I can open up for discussion. Okay, I'll second it. Okay, thank you, Ms. Peterson. I appreciate that. Now we can go ahead and open up for discussion. This is going to change the number of positions that we have at each rank, correct? Yes. And I'm just hoping that somebody can walk us through. I know that we were working to reduce the salaries by attrition. And I'm hoping that somebody can just walk us through the changes and the ramifications for what these changes are going to mean. I'm not sure I fully understand. Emily, I know we got an email from Ann that showed that this will save us over $200,000. She gave us an explanation of it. She emailed it. We are reducing the sergeants by two headcount, and we're, we're increasing the lieutenant, lieutenant by one. So it's a net reduction, two sergeants for one lieutenant. Increasing so I saw the, Thank you. And I saw the $200,000 net savings. Is that a permanent savings or does that have a timeline cap? So through, through the council president, if I may, um, to council member Peterson. Uh, so the net loss of positions since we started this endeavor with eliminating the two lieutenants last year will be a net loss of three positions. So initially, we had the two sergeants and we had the two lieutenants. Last year, we made an effort to reduce the two lieutenant positions, which we did successfully. I think it was a month or two ago, uh, due to the second retirement, we had eliminated those two positions through attrition. Now, the, the chief has made a determination that there is a need to restore one of the lieutenant positions based on the structure of the department, and he is making available the elimination of two sergeant positions. So when you take those four brass positions together, by the time this process has completed itself and the two sergeant positions are eliminated, you will have lost one lieutenant and two sergeants. Um, the answer to answer your question with regard to whether or not it is a permanent savings, that really will be up to the town council in whether or not they at some point in the future restore these positions. If the council remains, this council and future councils remain committed to keeping these positions um, off the table of organization, then you will continue to see that savings into the future. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, okay, thank you. Well, in, in addition to that, um, the lieutenant position uh, that's requested uh, is to oversee the new communication system that the police department is implementing. Uh, so they need a lieutenant in charge of the new communication system. This also doesn't show a, a savings in pulling out of the county um, system and going into our own is an additional savings, which doesn't even show up here. Dan Cucci, am I correct? Yes, you are, Mike. It's over $200,000. Any other uh, discussion? Yeah, you know, I just want to say, you know, that put on the, the agenda, you know, just less than yesterday, I guess. So, you know, and it's, it's often that the council is asked to approve things last minute without allowing the proper time for a thorough review. So is there any reason why this wasn't known earlier so we could, you know, really take a look at this? And I appreciate all the information that Ann provided. You know, but my concern is next year we'll be asked to add a sergeant and then we'll be back to where we were. 
Um, so is there any schedule to be, is, is there any, and I'd like to know too, if there's any schedule for them to train um, someone else besides this one now lieutenant to understand this communication system so we aren't dependent on one individual. And, and really, and how much of that $212,000 are we going to save this year? Any, anything? Yeah. Well, that's a good point. This is, you would have to take just a percentage of that. That's an annual savings, but you will recognize it right away in this, in this budget. I just have to take that and divide it by whenever you pass it, whenever he decides to do this. But they are retiring at two retirements right now. So they're retiring when? Uh, they're retiring when? One September 1st and another one October 1st. Well, yes, September we don't, Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to offer that we don't like last minute add ons. Um, one of the reasons for, for pushing this through now was the promotion list, I believe, um, will expire soon. And we have someone qualified now to be promoted. And if we lose that, then we have to wait for a new test, as I understand it. Yeah, I, you know, I'm just saying that sort of overall that, that, you know, with some of these things, I think it would be helpful for us to have more time to review it. You know, my question still is, why didn't we know this earlier? We knew the when the communication system was coming online. And we obviously knew that individuals had to be trained. I guess that's my point. But um, so the savings this year will probably be not much. So it really is next year's savings we're talking about, right? Wouldn't it come out to about a quarter of the year by the time yes, it's been paid? Yes, quarter of the year, exactly. Well, well it's, it's October 1st. Yeah. Well, it would first actually start the, September. Uh, first. Now, October 1st is two retirements, right, Ann? Yes, there is two retirements. You're, at, you're saving $52,000 with this move by the elimination of two sergeants and adding a lieutenant. It's $50,000. Yes. This year. Yes. Okay. Then 212 next year. Okay, thanks. Okay. Well, just one more thing, if I may. The other thing that's happening with along with these changes is that the police officer at the PAL building will be put back on the road. He will no longer be sitting there at the KL building uh, when the kids aren't there, which is something was parking me. Any other uh, discussion on this ordinance? Okay. Uh, seeing none, we had a motion by um, Mr. Cariffi and a second by Ms. Peterson. Um, at this point, we're going to go into roll call. Mr. Cariffi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Uh, at this time, we're gonna move to uh, second reading and public hearing. Uh, as, uh, as mentioned previously, in an effort to streamline the agenda and make it more efficient uh, for the council and for the public, I will be going, going ahead and reading through the titles of the ordinance, and then we'll go ahead and do one motion for all ordinances and a public hearing on all ordinances and I asked the public if anyone would like to comment on any one of the ordinances, just give me the ordinance number, which I will state in the public hearing. Um, okay, moving along. Ordinance 2020 colon 19, establishing white collar salary ranges. Number two, ordinance 2020 20, bond ordinance, various improvements to the sewer, uh, sewer utility appropriating 6,415,000, authorizing the issuance of 6,415,000 bonds or notes of the township to finance the cost thereof. Number three, ordinance 2020 colon 21, bond ordinance, pump station four redirection tunnel program appropriating 8 million bond or notes of the township of, uh, to finance the cost thereof. Ordinance uh, 2020 colon 22, bond ordinance, various improvements to the water utility appropriating 6,410,000, authorizing the issuance of 6,410,000 bonds or notes of the township to finance the cost thereof. Number five, ordinance 2020 colon 23, Bond ordinance, various improvements 
to the golf and recreation utility appropriating 1,300,000, authorizing the issuance of 1,300,000 bonds or notes of the township to finance the cost thereof. Number six, ordinance 2020, colon 24. Bond ordinance, various capital improvements appropriating $7,878,009 and authorizing the issuance of $7,479,108 in bonds or notes of the township to finance the cost thereof. Number seven, ordinance 2020 colon 25, appropriating 35,000 from the fire prevention fund for the acquisition of a vehicle. Okay, at this time, the notice for ordinance 2020 colon 19 was published in the daily record, the official newspaper of the Township of Troy Hills on June 23rd, 2020. Notices for ordinances 2020 colon 20, 2020 colon 21, 2020 colon 22, 2020 colon 23, 2020 colon 24, and 2020 colon 25 were published in the daily record, the official newspaper of the Township of Persephone Troy Hills on June 22nd, 2020. The ordinances were introduced uh, at the June 16th regular meeting. I'd like to have a motion to accept that ordinances 2020 colon 19 through 2020 colon 25 be heard in their second and final reading by title only. Make a motion. May I please have a second? Second, Peterson. Okay, at this time, um, we're gonna open up the public hearing for ordinance numbers 2020 colon 19 through co uh, uh, ordinance numbers 2020 colon 25. Uh, if any member of the public would like to comment on any one of these ordinances, just please mention the ordinance number that you would like to uh, comment on. So at this time, I would like to uh, a motion for uh, open up the floor for the public hearing on ordinances number 2020 call 19 through 2020 call 25, please. Motion, Garniani. Second. Peterson. Okay, second, Peterson. May I have a roll call? Um, Mr. Corinthy? Yes. Ms. Mignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? You know, we're talking about this bond issue uh, for the sewer or the water utility. Mm -hmm. This is for the water utility. Was there one on there originally for the sewer utility? Uh, there was one for the water utility. Um, there, there Janet says two, but one for the water and two for the sewer. And the reason why there's well, separate is the reason why they're separate for the sewer is because of the way that we're going to fund the $8 million project. It's going to go through the, the state of New Jersey Environmental Trust Loan, which is a very, very low interest rate loan, and, and um, this qualifies for it. That's why they're separate. Okay, so the $8 million is for, with the uh, NJEIT? Correct. And that's where you're going to get the low interest rate? Yes. Yeah. And and the the other the other bonds, the six point four million for the water and the six point four million for the sewer. Um is that they're both on no? Yeah, they're regular bond ordinances because they make up a whole bunch of different capital projects. Um the NJ EIT loan is basically for a big, big project, project. which is that eight million. Yeah. So you, can you, Anne, do you, you know what the expected interest rate in terms of the bonds are for the water sewer and I think it's one for the null? Do you know what they right. are? Do you have any idea? Well, okay. I'll tell you about today. I talked to the financial analyst that we dealt with to do bonds, and a 10 year bond right now is running 1.6%. Um, 15 is 1.7, I believe, and a 20 year bond is running at 2%. That's today if we were to go out for, for notes and bonds. This would probably not even qualify to go out for permanent financing for three years. So, so that's so that's what you're anticipating going forward on the notes, you're anticipating that? We're going to do notes, which so is different. And that would be probably not till next year by the time we go out to bid and everything, I would go out to um, one year note to fund these, to fund the 6.4. In the meantime, we've already begun the process for the $8 million with the NJEIT. We're already registered and on the way to doing that. And so what do you think? These are 10 year, 15 year? What do you oh, think they are? They have to look at the exact, let me look here. Um, I have it here. 
on my computer. Um, depending on what for the sewer, it could be a little longer, but you know, we're buying some equipment which brings down the useful life when we're uh -huh. using you know, when we're doing some bigger work which we have here. Um for some channel covers and things like that, it brings up the useful life. I could look at the ordinance right now and tell you what the useful life is for the whole thing, if you want. Yeah, you can do that offline. You know, I was just wondering, you know, I think it'd be helpful in the future because these are self-liquidating bonds. So really, yeah. I think maybe on all bonds that, you know, we do it in that, yeah, I'm sure you do an analysis on the determination of back, back on the bond issue. Well, yeah. So, you know, and so, if that's available, I think it, I think it would be helpful. Okay. You know, forward. Okay. The thing okay. that I wanted to start to do, and we did start in 2018, I think, when you came on board, uh, is through operations. Some of these items. Okay. And that makes the useful life higher by not taking like some of the um, things like that and bonding them. So the more you yeah. do that kind of thing, it brings down the useful life. So, um, yeah, we do do an analysis. I can send you whatever you want to see for the sewer water and yeah. golf. Okay, and even the general. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wait, do we have one more question, Anne? Do we have any uh, historical debt service ratios that we can look at just to see what what it looks like going forward? Can you see what it's going to look like going forward? I, you broke up a little bit. I couldn't. Can you just say it again? You know, you know, because you know we're we're doing a lot of this these uh, financing, uh, bond financing. Do we have any historical debt service ratios? And then you know what our current ratio is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I can send you that. Yeah, just so we know. I think that's important to know. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, thank you, Ms. McCarthy. Um, uh, so we have uh, we had a motion on the floor to open up the public hearing. Uh, Ms. McCarthy said yes. Ms. Peterson. Yes, and I'll I'll be very quick. I just want to say so that it's clear for the record, we are saying yes to bonding millions and millions of dollars for improvements that could have otherwise been paid for out of the fund that we have been using for operating expenses. And so we're really reluctant to raise those rates and refill that money. And we're excited about interest rates that we can get. No disrespect meant, and I'm sorry, I'm coming off a little snarky, but I'm just frustrated that we can very easily borrow this quantity of money that we do have to pay back, but we're not going to raise the rates without serious, hard conversations. So with that, I say yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Okay. So at this time, uh, I am now going to open up the floor to the public if they would like to comment only on the ordinances numbers 2020 colon 19 through 2020 colon 25. When I call your name, Please uh, state the ordinance number you will be commenting on, and you will have five minutes. At, at this point, um, I see Mr. Venezia's hand is up. Let's go ahead and unmute Mr. Venezia. Bobby, there. Bobby, there. Um, wait a minute. Hear, we hear you, Bob. You hear me? I hear you. Well, uh, what do you want from me? No, did you want to comment? Because your hand is up. Oh, my hand has been up. Okay. Uh, are you looking to comment on anything? I didn't get it. I, I, I didn't have anything specific on any of these ordinances. I guess I never shut my hand off. No problem, Bob. Not a problem and, uh, at all. But I, do, I, would, I would have liked to comment after I had a second crack. No, we can't. You, you I, know, know. I, I know. But let me just say the numbers I gave you were direct from your budget. Their budget numbers exactly. All right. Maybe I didn't interpret them right, but they are true budget numbers. Bob, thank you for your time. We got to cut okay. you off, Bob. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna call. If you have your hand up and you do not intend to speak, I'm asking if you could please put your hand down. 
because I will call on you. Okay, so at this point, I see uh, Mr. Kevin Brancato. His hand is up. Let's unmute Kevin for a second. Clint, I think it's something with the uh, the hands. My hand was up from before. I didn't put it up this time either. Okay, no problem. Sorry about that, Kevin. All right. Okay, um, now just because I do see the hand up, I still will call on you just to make sure you have an opportunity. Uh, uh, Ms. Jean Embler, uh, let's unmute her for a second, please. Jean, did you have anything to say about the ordinances? You there, Jean? Okay, uh, let's go ahead and mute Jean. Let's go ahead, okay, thank you. And uh, all right, Nick, we're gonna give Nick another try here. Let's unmute Nick for a second, see if he has anything to comment on the ordinances. Nick, you there? Can you hear me? I hear you, Nick. There you go. How you doing? Figure it out. Uh, I just on the ordinance uh, 2020. I I really believe that the water and sewer uh, should be in trust for those purposes only. Water itself is the public trust. And it, I really don't believe it was the wise, wise to be using uh, the surplus for tax patches. And I do hope that uh, that, that ends uh, sometime in the near future. And the meager amount that was required to cover some of these needed infrastructures, the average $4.32, I still think that 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 was no extravagant amount. And at the same time, it didn't have to be an ongoing tax, but for water infrastructure to keep our water, pH, all that, the pipes, we if we don't get money from other sources, this is what community is all about. So I, 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 uh, I just can't wait till that practice ends. All right, seeing no one else, I'd like to I'd like to entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion. Second, Peterson. Motion made by Mr. Carippi, seconded by Ms. Peterson. Roll call. Mr. Carippi? Yes. Ms. Brignani. Ms. Brignani? Yes. Uh, Ms. McCarthy. Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Okay, floor is closed. Whereas the above ordinances were read in title on second reading and here and a hearing held thereon. Now therefore be it resolved that said ordinances be passed on final reading and that a notice of final passage of said ordinances be published in the newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the resolution above. Motion. Okay, motion made by Ms. Pignani. Second. 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 Sorry. Uh second made by Mr. Cariffi. Uh roll call. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Oh, Mr. Cariffi? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, moving along to the non <laughs> agenda, the resolutions R2020-149, declaring an emergency for purposes of all laws of the immediate act of ordinance 2020 colon 19. May I please have a motion to approve the resolution above? Motion, Grignani. Can I get a second? May I please get a second? Okay, second, Ms. McCarthy. Uh, roll call, uh, Mr. Carippi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Uh, Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. All two passes. Okay, moving along to the uh, consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are routine and non-controversial by the Township Council and will be approved by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member so requests, in which case the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Motion to approve the um, consent agenda. Make a motion. Second, okay. Peterson. Made by Mr. Cariffi, seconded by Ms. Peterson. Roll call. Mr. Cariffi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Ms. Brignani? Yes, sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, Ms. McCarthy? 
Yes. Ms. Peterson. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Okay. Motion passes. Moving along to the approval of payroll and bills list. Uh, CFO Ancucci recommends authorization for payment. Author number one, authorized payment of the July 24th, 2020 regular miscellaneous payroll estimated at 1.6 million. And number two, payment of bills from voucher list of August 1st, 2020 through August 2nd, 2020, which is uh, $2,570,793.77. Can I please have a motion to approve the authorization for payment? Motion. Second, Grignani. Motion made by Ms. Peterson, seconded by Ms. Grignani. Uh, roll call. Um, Mr. Cariffi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, at this time, we're going to adjourn. Can I please have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion. Motion. Motion made by Ms. Peterson, seconded by Mr. Cariffi. Roll call, Mr. Cariffi. Yes. Ms. Guignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. And Mr. DePiro? Yes. Okay, at this time, the meeting is adjourned. I'd like to thank the council members, the mayor, the BA, the CFO, the financial attorney, and everyone else on this meeting and the residents. Thank you all, and you all have a good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.